Thank you for being here. I'm Rashawn Baker, a former county executive of Prince George's County, former state legislator. And uh, before that, I led a nonprofit for eight years. I'd first like to thank um, our university partners. Uh, President Wallace Lowe, thank you for, for your support. Uh, Provost Rankin, Dean Orr, um, and distinguished faculty, students uh, who are here today. I'd also like to thank our speakers of today, um, my good friend, Governor O'Malley, who's coming out with a new book that will hit the stands in November 5th. November 5th. So we have to make sure everyone goes out and uh, gets that. Um, someone who's working with the Hogan administration right now, um, but I know him as one of my colleagues, uh, former county executive, uh, David Craig, who's also a former state senator and a former mayor. And I think you were in the House too and House Delegate, so uh, he covered all bases, so he's going to be great. And in Hadi, Hadi Sadai uh, from the National Association of Counties, we're so glad to have you here. Their partnership is invaluable. Uh, one of the people who could not make it this morning, um, Dan McCoy, who's the county executive of Albany County, uh, is the president of the County Executives of America, so we're glad to have their support. I'd also like to thank um, the chair of the University of Maryland College Park Foundation, Jeff Ganella, who was unable to be here this morning, but uh, has been really a, a great partner in working on this. Um, so I'm excited to be here this morning. Um, I'm excited to launch this, uh, this partnership with the University of Maryland School of Public Policy um, for elected executive leadership program for new and recently elected uh, local chief executives. Um, the Excel program. And so uh, I particularly want to thank, as I introduce uh, the next speaker, uh, Dr. Wallace Lowe. One of the things that we have talked about in our many conversations is the fact that we took over, um, he took over as president and I took over as county executive at the same time. And one of the frustrations and uh, issues that we face in Prince George's County, which is the second largest jurisdiction in the state of Maryland, was the fact that we had this great university right here in our midst, but there was no real partnership. We were working in silos. And so my good friend Wayne Curry said, Baker, this guy's different. He gets it. And I said, I've heard that before, Wayne. <laughs> and the first thing that Dr. Lowe did that I asked for his help was on the purple line. It was a bold step. It was a step that many people couldn't see the vision, but he did that. And so when you look at the transformation of Prince George's County, the university, the state of Maryland, it's because things like the purple line the hotel at, uh, at University of Maryland that's on College Park, that's on uh, Baltimore Avenue, which used to be called Route 1 before we had development along there. If you think about our relationship from the College Park Academy, um, and then our desire to do something even bolder uh, um, before, we, uh, before he gets out of here, um, and I hope he will mention that, that I think will transform, as I said, not just the county, but transform the entire state. And that's one of the things that we want the people who are coming here uh, in this program to learn about. And so with no further ado, Dr. Wallace Lowe. Thank you, Rashern. I can't tell you how excited I am that we're starting this program in leadership for county executives. Uh, I have a book here. It was written by Governor O'Malley, and this is the book that's going to come out. Smarter Government, How to Govern for Results in the Information Age. So I just saw it like 15 minutes ago, and I was glancing through it. It is part textbook. It's also part memoir. But at the very beginning, he notes that how service in the federal government used to be a high calling, and it still is, 
But a lot of the excitement these days of what is happening is not at the federal level, it's at the state level, it's at the local level. And many, many young people want to go into that area, and I'm glad to see so many students here today. But also to provide this education for county executives. And the marriage between somebody who has this incredible experience of uh, four years of having transformed Prince George's County in terms of public education, in terms of health, there's a new regional medical center, in terms of transforming neighborhoods and reducing crime. Uh, to take all of that practical knowledge, combine it with the theoretical knowledge and analysis of the faculty in the School of Public Policy, this will be a program second to none in the country. Let me also, and that's why I'm so excited, I'm so pleased that you're bringing this program here and working with uh, Bob Orr and uh, other colleagues at the university. Let me just conclude by saying this. For me, the most significant event was shortly after I was appointed and I get this call from somebody called Rashurn Baker, I had no idea who he was. He was the recently elected county executive. And he said, um, I'd like to invite you for dinner. I said, sure. So we go to this little dive somewhere in Prince George's County <laughs> with a guy by the name of Wayne Curry who I've never heard about. This dinner, you will recall, lasted three and a half hours. We look through the window and Wayne Curry will point to me, you see that street over there, Wallace? That was an unwritten barrier when I was growing up. Kids like me could not cross this barrier because if we crossed that street, we would get beaten up. And we had to do a big detour around so I can get to where I was. The short of it is that they taught me a lesson that I've never forgotten. And during one of our trips to that we took together, and this is thanks to Governor O'Malley, he led a delegation to India, and I was on the trip, so it was Wayne Curry, and we were walking around some ruins, you know, it was called the Red Palace or wherever it was, and we were talking about Prince George's County. And he said to me, I'll never forget this, he said, Wallace, you know, it's, uh, University of Maryland is in College Park, but you guys think of the, you, 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 you guys at the university think that it is a college in a park. That's your problem. You are a college or a university in a larger surrounding community and you guys are not engaged. Then the libel goes on. But of course, I have no idea how to be engaged. It began with the purple line. It then began with uh, trying to address education by starting the uh, College Park Academy, a public charter school that now has the highest test scores in Prince George's County many of them coming to College Park, <laughs> expanding our police force, having concurrent jurisdiction, uh, economic development. We have $2 billion of economic development within the past three years. We have created 850 high-tech jobs, bringing in something like 15 new companies. So this is becoming the cyber uh, valley of the mid-Atlantic, and of course the Purple Line. All of this because you taught us, you taught me, that the University of Maryland cannot be a university in a park as to be a university engaged with the surrounding community. And I hope that recognizing that, that stats and information technology is important is the close partnership between local officials and one of the anchor institutions of a community, which is a major research university, helps drive change and transforming neighborhoods. So thank you so much for bringing this program. And thank you for making possible, and to you, Governor, for making possible the transformation of College Park. Thank you so much, Dr. Lowe, for your leadership. Um, I'd next like to bring up uh, Dean Orr, uh, who is the uh, Dean of the School of Public Policy um, and former under, UN Undersecretary General and Special Advisor to the UN uh, Secretary General on Climate Change. He's a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. And uh, we had a great conversation uh, this morning um, and over the past months about why this program is so necessary um, for executives, uh, both at the county level and at the um, municipal level, because many of them have universities right next to them. And like Prince George's County, they don't understand how they can come together. 
um, they'll learn that here. And what we're also hoping is that many of those executives that we bring from around um, the nation will actually send their staff here to learn on policy issues and things of that nature. And so, uh, Dean Orr, thank you. Thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the School of Public Policy this morning. Um, this is a partnership that we are very proud of. Um, this is a School of Public Policy that serves the state of Maryland and the people of Maryland as a land-grant university. But one of the sets of people that we often miss uh, are all the people who live in the state whose daily lives are directly affected by local government, by the counties and the municipalities. And with this partnership with Rashern Baker III and the incredible partners that you will hear from today, we are ready to start to fill that gap. Um, the University of Maryland uh, is a land-grant institution, which means our purpose in being here is to serve the public good. Uh, through this training, we think we can help executives help their people across not just Maryland, but across the entire United States. And uh, as Mr. Baker just mentioned, uh, this is a phenomenon that is global as well. Uh, cities, states, municipalities, counties uh, are innovating all over the world. Uh, through this program, we expect, expect to bring the most innovative people and the solutions that are being found all over uh, to the people being trained through this program. Um, I am uh, very pleased to hand the microphone next to, while everyone likes to call him Governor O'Malley, uh, he is also uh, former Mayor O'Malley, but I like to call him Professor O'Malley because he taught here uh, our students in uh, the School of Public Policy um, the, both the opportunities as well as the challenges of governing in a very new age. Uh, not just the information age, but uh, the kinds of challenges and the kinds of tools that can be brought, not just to the classroom, but to leadership, to executive responsibility. And I will tell you, uh, the group of people that uh, Rashern Baker has helped us to bring together to focus on executive leadership is going to move this forward, not just within our school, but for a whole set of constituencies that need the services uh, that this uh, excellent uh, initiative will provide. Thank you. Professor O'Malley. <laughs> Dean Orr, thank you very much. And thank you all for taking the time to be here. And thank you, Rashern Baker, for you know harvesting the the rich treasure of memories that was your distinguished service in Prince George's County. I, I, I had occasion to serve the people of Maryland as their governor uh, during the biggest recession we've had since the Great Depression. And any fool can govern in easy times, Wallace, right? But, <laughs> but governing through a recession is hard. And I had the honor to work with some terrific county executives in Maryland, one of whom you'll hear from shortly, and that is David Craig from Harford County, who came by county executive service honestly. He was a mayor first, and, and a proud Republican in the tradition of Lincoln. And I also had occasion to work with Rashern Baker. And let me tell you, that there was a, a, a fewer things that gave me as much of a sense of satisfaction as the partnership that we had in Prince George's County. The work that I saw Rushern Baker take on with the zeal of a modern executive, fearless, unafraid of openness and transparency and performance measurement, and the way he took uh, the data, the silos, as we've mentioned, and managed to land them on the map of our own common good and drive initiatives like the Transforming Neighborhoods Initiative, where he didn't look at just the performance of one department at a time, he looked at the collection, the impact of all of those uh, different departments on the life of real people in real places, in neighborhoods that could slide back 
or neighborhoods that could be moved forward. And indeed, he moved them forward. And that's why this initiative is so very important. The great Casey Stengel, I think, once said that uh, uh, in, in theory, there's no difference between practice and theory. But in practice, there is. <laughs> and so hats off to Wallace Lowe and to Dean Orr for recognizing uh, the, the value of practice, the value of that ongoing learning that we have to find better ways to foster among these individually elected men and women from all over the country who think once election day happens that they have a very lonely job. But there's people throughout our country and throughout the world that are doing these jobs and they're doing it with the same vision and the passion and the commitment and the fearlessness that Rushern Baker uh, brought to the job of county executive. Uh, final thought, there is a new way of governing emerging and I know it's hard when we look at the national news and we're beaten over the head by you know, the scandal du jour every single day. But there's actually a lot of really good things happening throughout the world and even in our country. Gallup polling, who asks Americans what their level of trust is in their federal government and their local government, they've been asking the same question for 30 years. And what you see if you look at the trend lines is a deeply troubling trend when it comes to our federal government. Faith in our federal government is at an all-time low. And yet, measured over the same period of just a few decades, faith in our local government is at an all-time high. Why is that? I believe it's because of the practice that Rushern Baker brought to the people of Prince George's and that other county executives had the power to bring as well. They have the power to convene, the power to leave behind the old ways of leadership, which were often ideological, bureaucratic, and hierarchical, and instead embrace a new, more entrepreneurial way of governing, a way that is collaborative, that's interactive, that has the courage to ask the question every single day, are the things that we are doing working or not? And if they are, how can we do more of it? And if they're not, how can we shift and adapt or pivot in the terms of uh, software developers in order to get the job done? Because at the end of the day, the basis of any republic is its ability to deliver public things, the things of the republic. And right now with this institute, uh, we have the ability to tap that and accelerate it. And I couldn't be more delighted that you are devoting your energies to this, Rashern, along with the, uh, uh, the National uh, uh, League of Counties, is it? L National League of, of Counties. And now, would you like to introduce David, or would you like me to introduce David? I think Russ Shearn worked all night on this, so I'm not going to take his prerogative. So uh, thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Governor O'Malley. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, it's something that uh, Dean Orr said uh, that reminded me of a, uh, a quote that, it, that uh, I actually heard John F. Kennedy say during a speech when he was talking about a land-grant college. And he, uh, he may have been quoting someone else, Governor O'Malley, but he said, "Great universe, what is the use of a great university if it's not serving a great purpose? And that's really the remarks that Dean Orr and President Lowe and Governor O'Malley have talked about, that we sit in a great university and it serves a great purpose. And we want that purpose not just to be here in College Park, but that purpose to go out across the nation, because why not us? Why not this university? And so I wanna um, thank uh, Dean Orr and, and, and his folks, and we look forward to this. Certainly, you know, I could not um, thank Governor O'Malley enough. Uh, I, I noticed his, his new book that we've talked about a couple of times. Um, you know, I can tell you it works because before uh, I became county executive, Prince George's County did not have a 311 system. Uh, we did not have a county stat. And we couldn't have done the, the pivotal issue that we, we did as county, uh, and that is our Transforming Neighborhood of Initiative, without a forward-thinking governor who learned everything as a forward-thinking mayor. And so I'd like to bring up another forward-thinking mayor 
uh, former state senator, former delegate, uh, but my friend who was one of the best um, county executives uh, that I had a chance to get to know and learn from in my first year as county executive and to be friends with, and that is David Craig, former uh, county executive of Hartford County. But the first thing I have to warn him is that I was a teacher and I speak for 50 minutes. <laughs> I was a teacher for 15 years and assistant principal for, t uh, for 19 years. So, uh, uh, but I think it is a very good thing to have a, a, a program like this so that we can educate people who are going to be in office or who are in office. Um, I'm also happy to be here because my brother graduated from here in 1969 and then he en en enlisted in the Navy. So uh, it's, it's uh, but I can also tell you, if you're the county executive, the most important thing you can do is get somebody to drive you someplace, because it, I was here for half an hour before I could find where I needed to be, and I was by myself. Um, but uh, before I was the mayor, I was actually also the city councilman and the city council president. And then um, the man who was the mayor was getting a little older and he wanted to step down and he actually wanted me to run. And uh, so when I became the, the mayor, I learned a lot of difference from where I sat um, and what I was supposed to do and wh what I needed to do, uh, but I enjoyed it. And um, I have told people uh, that have been mayors or county executives that you know, first you run for office, then you get elected, then you get sworn in, and every day after that you get sworn at by somebody. <laughs> just the way that works. <clears throat> but also sometimes that could be the person that you go to at home. <laughs> because uh, I can also tell you as county executive, uh, that was a 24 hour a day job. I think, I think you know that, don't you? <laughs> because I would get phone calls at one o'clock in the morning and I'd get them at four o'clock in the morning sometimes with uh, issues and things like that. Um, but uh, you know, and then, but before I became the county executive, I had also been the state delegate and the state senator. So that also taught me another level of um, the difference between somebody on the legislative side and somebody on the executive side. So that, that's also important. And I am the only person in the history of the state who was the president of MML and MACO. So I was the president of the municipalities and uh, organization and then of the, the uh, county's organizations, and um, I enjoyed doing both of them. Um, but that was also a travel around the state of Maryland a lot. But it does teach you a lot. And I, I would recommend that uh, anybody that's a, a mayor, make sure you are uh, connected with MML on a regular basis, because they help you a lot. And if you're a county executive, make sure you get connected with MACO, because they can help you a lot too, uh, both in learning things and uh, in doing things. Um, let's see, you know, uh, another, um, I can also tell you that this county executive, I don't know if it happened to you, but uh, uh, like I said, it was uh, usually a 12 hour day job. And, uh, but two of the, three of the important things to do were to appoint the uh, 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 chief of staff, because they had to do a lot of the work for you and um, also then the director of administration and then the uh, assistant that would be the one who her desk was right outside my my room and uh, she was the one that was able to uh, take care of my calendar every day and uh, make sure you know we knew what was going on and, and things like that but if, you know if you have former classes here i'd be you know i could come back and speak about uh, a lot of different uh, a lot of different things uh, um, I do remember one day, uh, the first uh, um, month I was county executive and they planned a day. When I got home, I realized that uh, I hadn't had lunch, I hadn't had breakfast, and I hadn't had dinner because they had, every time I was getting ready to eat something, they had scheduled something for me to do. So uh, then I told them, we can change this to be a lunch meeting, it can be a breakfast meeting, it could be a dinner meeting. So that happened a lot too. Um, and after after this is all over and the other two people, well, the three people speak, I'll, I can hang around for a while if you have a, any little questions you wanna ask. Um, but I have tried to remind, and I haven't told the, the governor yet, my official title right now is Pop-Up, because we have eight grandchildren. 
<laughs> and that's even more busy than being county executive. <laughs> I think County Executive uh, Craig stole my thunder in the, the part of my speech. Um, as I said uh, in the beginning, um, unfortunately, uh, County Executive Dan McCoy, who is uh, in his second term and is the County Executive of Albany County in New York, and presently the uh, President of the County Executives of America, where I, I served uh, two terms and so did uh, um, Ike uh, from Montgomery County served as, uh, as president, uh, could not be here today, but we're pleased to have um, their cooperation and support in identifying those emerging uh, leaders from around uh, this, the country who are going to be part of this program. Um, the next person I'd like to introduce, um, Hadi Sadai, whose name I'm probably butchering, but <laughs> who is the Chief Innovative Officer at the National Association of Counties. Uh, NACO is a leading voice for counties nationwide. Um, I certainly want to give uh, a shout out to Matt Chase, uh, the Chief uh, uh, Executive there, who uh, you know is one of the people that I turned to when I became County Executive, who's helped us through. Um, we're glad to have their partnership in this. And uh, Adi, why don't we have you just come up? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baker, and I am thrilled to be here on behalf of our CEO, Matt Chase, and the membership of the National Association of Counties to express our support uh, in this exciting new program here at the University of Maryland. Uh, we're thrilled that newly elected county executives from Maryland and Texas and New York and Tennessee and all around the country will be able to come here to College Park and tap into the expertise of a former county executive and Mr. Baker, who's been a great champion and a great leader in our networks for a number of years, uh, as well as the expertise of the University of Maryland and the School of Public Policy. So we look forward to partnering with you all in this work and continuing our great partnership with Mr. Baker and establishing new partnerships with the university as well and uh, under President Lowe and Dean Orr's leadership. Thank you all for having us and look forward to supporting your work here. Thank you. And so uh, just, to, just to close up, you know, one of the things that I wanted to talk about um, was actually how we got here this morning. Uh, not physically, how did we drive here, but why are we doing this? And more importantly for me, Dr. Lowe, um, why was this a, an important thing that I wanted to do with my time when I left being county executive? Uh, it actually goes back to, you know, the first couple of months as county executive. If those of you who are around this Washington area this, uh, can remember back in 2010, if you were in Prince George's County, what you knew, and for that matter, if you were anywhere around the nation and probably around the world, what you knew about Prince George's County in December after I had won or in November after I had won the, uh, the county executive seat, was that the county executive was going to jail, um, had been arrested by the FBI, uh, and that the county was under investigation. So I come in after trying to be uh, county executive three times to a situation where not only is the county executive going to jail, um, but in the midst of one of the greatest recessions there is. Prince George's County was leading the nation in foreclosures. A month after I got into office, um, we had 13 homicides in 13 days. I had fired the police chief, the fire chief. In fact, I fired everyone who had any decision-making position in the government. So basically, we were building a government from scratch. Homicides went up. Our economy was shot. Wall Street was nervous because they had a county executive who had only run a nonprofit of 18 people. Federal dollars were stolen, so Wall Street said, we think we're gonna take away your AAA bond rating because we're nervous about your ability to lead in these times. And then on a very tired day, uh, County Executive Craig, I was at a podium like this, and I was speaking and I hadn't slept for, you know, what felt like months, but it had only been really two months. 
And my staff had promised me I'd get to go home and get some sleep. And I just had to do this one speech in front of a church. So I'm speaking there, and one of my staff members comes by and he hands me a piece of paper. And it says, there is a fire burning in the northern part of the county. I said, great, call the fire chief. I'm going home. I continue speaking and there's another note that comes up. There's a fire burning in the middle part of the county. I say, call the deputy fire chief. Final note comes and it says, there's a fire burning in the southern part of the county. It was 300 acres in the north, 600 acres in the south, in the middle of the county. Had not had seven fires on one day. Hadn't happened in 47 years, but it happened to me. We had a 100-year flood where the administration building had two feet of water under it. We had an earthquake, which I didn't know we had here. And my good friend at the time, Wayne Curry, um, came to visit me one day and he said, man, you look bad. He said, if you don't do something, you're gonna flatline. <laughs> and what made me think about that was, here I was going from a legislator who didn't have these responsibilities and taking on these responsibilities with no training, with no one to turn to. I was lucky that I had Wayne Curry as a mentor. But what made me think about this thing throughout my eight years is what happens to folks who don't have someone who's mentoring them? Where do they go? There is no new school for county executives. It's on the job training. And if you think about it, and Governor O'Malley said this, Many of us, and I was no different, we campaign in poetry, and then we realized we had to govern in prose. Because the first thing you get is the real budget. You don't know how to pick a staff. You don't know what Wall Street really means, unless you've been a Wall Street banker, and even that wouldn't help. You, think the you don't know how to deal with the legislative body. In a real way, they were your former colleagues, now it's you, and they're on the other side. Um, all of these things scared me. And so what I wanted was an opportunity, just think about it, in the midst of, of all those things, you know, picking up the trash, dealing with homicides, um, trying to come up with innovative programs. If you're an executive now, you have to worry about federal issues. Most people don't think about that. But when the federal government passed a stormwater management policy, it trickles down, right, Governor, to the local jurisdictions. I never thought about, thought about um, stormwater management when I was running. Wasn't part of my campaign thing. Reimbursement for hospitals wasn't part of my campaign spill. You know, climate change. All of these things are going on simultaneously as you're trying to just make sure people trashed are picked up and the streets are safe. So there should be a place where people can go and not only have a chance to network and know their colleagues, but also have a chance, Governor O'Malley, to have the ability to think broadly and innovatively without it being a political club that's used to hit over them over the head by their opponents, which happens when you're in this job. Either somebody wants your job or they don't think you're doing a good job. And so what this will offer us is a chance to have those executives from around the country to network here at this great university, to think deeply and broadly about issues that University of Maryland School of Public Policy is addressing already. And just think about this. This university becomes the place that trains the next generation of leaders throughout the country and maybe throughout the world. But more importantly, and I think all of us who served in an executive capacity will say this, this university could train, could train the next level of management, the people who stay there once the executive leaves. That upcoming, and matter of fact, some of those 
students might be in this room right now who are going to lead the new efforts around innovation. And so I'm excited about the program. I'm excited about what we're going to do. Just a brief overview of what the program is going to be about. So the program will have a cohort of executives, 15 to 20. It will be in three parts. The first part will be a three-day meeting in December, which we're excited about, which will kick off um, the first cohort. That will happen uh, from December, December 4th through December 6th. Um, we're very pleased that, uh, you know, uh, people are excited about this. Uh, executives are, are interested in coming. Uh, and that our guest speaker will be someone who, um, our kickoff speaker and keynote, is someone who's faced challenges as a mayor. Uh, Mitch Landry, who was mayor of New Orleans after Katrina. Uh, someone who um, wrote his book just before Governor O'Malley. Um, and talks about the struggles of taking down Confederate statues in the South. Um, I think it's somebody that these executives who are in their first terms are going to hear from. And that's the caliber of people we want to attract here. I was very pleased that, um, and this is not self-promotion, but uh, uh, pleased that I got to know Mitch because we both were awarded the Governing Magazine's Public Official of the Year. I know you've gotten this Governor O'Malley at the same time, so we, uh, we got to know each other. Um, but I'm thrilled to have him as, as one of the speakers. The other series will be a luncheon that will be held either at NACO's, um, an opportunity for them to come to NACO's uh, uh, meeting and be part of the, the luncheon series. And the other will be at the U.S. Conference of Mayors. So we're excited. One of the things that we're also going to do in this part with Baker Strategies is offer the participate, participants in the program an opportunity um, for Baker Strategy to come out and to work with them in their home jurisdictions. You know, these programs are great, uh, but often what happens is once you leave the programs, then there's no follow-up. There's no one to come and say, here's what we're doing. So that's what's going to make it different here. So we're excited about the program. This is a great kickoff, and it couldn't be in a better place. We think this is the location on, uh, for, to attract these, these new leaders. And um, if there's any indication about the composition of speakers that we've had today, um, you know, it's going to be a great program. Let me do this. Uh, Provost Rankin is, is here, and I want to thank her for coming. Uh, it, it is very important. Uh, let me close with this. I, I could not have a uh, you know, better supporter than the University of Maryland, and I didn't want to do it anywhere else. Uh, now, if, if this goes live and Howard University hears me, they will be mad, but, <laughs> but I think this is the place. This is a great university, and we want to help it continue to serve a great purpose. Thank you.